all wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries coming from the center of the Milky Way, but also coming from centers of other galaxies in regards to very specific phenomenon that usually happens around central black holes. The phenomenon we refer to as TDE, the tidal disruption event that usually involves the central black hole and some kind of an unfortunate star approaching the black hole a little bit too close. And in this case we have several discoveries from different studies in regards to the nearest such event, but also in regards to this event happening around Sagittarius A star, the central black hole of the Milky Way galaxy. And so let's discuss all of this in a little bit more detail, starting with the discovery of what seems to be the closest such event ever found, the event you see in this image right here. And when it comes to various observations from other galaxies, Today the scientists believe that such events usually occur every 10,000 years in, a in the center of a typical galaxy. Or in other words, every 10,000 years we expect an average star to approach a black hole and basically create what you see right here. But to date only approximately 100 of such events have been discovered in various distant galaxies and mostly by observing various X-rays and in some cases ultraviolet and optical light. And in pretty much most cases these events have been very similar. They involve a sudden brightening that usually lasts for just over a year with very specific emissions that slowly decrease over time. But this time the scientists studying the galaxy NGC 7392 that you see right here discovered something the scientists have never seen before. They found a TDE that was only visible in the infrared light and not in X-rays or UV light. Something that happened back in 2014 and 2015 and was initially missed by various surveys. But more importantly, this is the TDE that seems to be the closest to us, approximately 137 million light years away, and about one fourth of the distance of the other closest TDE observed in the X rays. Although the reason it's only visible in the infrared is actually because of an extremely dusty environment in the center of this galaxy. In essence, the center here just has way too much dust for most of the other light to get out, and because it's visible in the infrared, in theory, we should be able to observe some of these events in the future by catching them with the James Webb Space Telescope. It hasn't happened yet, and obviously this particular event was already missed, but it's something that should be possible in the future. Now what about our own galaxy though? And so let's jump back to the Milky Way that should be somewhere right here. Well, the Milky Way, by comparison, is a little bit more mild and dramatically more quiet. The observations from that other galaxy suggest that first of all the black hole there is a lot more massive as well possibly as much as 8 times more massive, and is a lot more active, containing a much more active center. But the region of Sagittarius A star is really really quiet, and the black hole here compared to other galaxies is also relatively small, it's just over 4 million solar masses. Nevertheless, in the last few years, the scientists have actually started to detect a few more X-ray emissions and a lot more flare-ups, suggesting that for some reason our black hole is entering a more active period. It's not entirely certain what it's caused by, but over the last few years, or more like over the last decade, Sagittarius A star started to emit a lot more X-ray flares, with a really big flare detected in 2019 that made the black hole about 75 times brighter. And with several hundred flares detected in the last few years, it looks like that on average all of them increased in brightness, implying of course that the galactic center is becoming a little bit more active for uncertain reasons. But it's obviously uncertain if any of this has anything to do with some kind of a stellar remnant or if it's some kind of a dust cloud that's falling from some other region causing the increase in activity. But what is certain is that TDEs have definitely happened around the Milky Way and the sign of an ancient TDE has now been found here as well. And intriguingly enough, this study suggests that it only happened 200 years ago, plus minus a few decades. And so here's how the scientists discovered this and what this implies for our galaxy. Even though the central black hole is still very inactive, it's possible to see previous activity by looking at interaction of ancient light with various structures around the center. And so very similar to how the sun right here reflects from the clouds and announces its presence even though we don't see the sun itself, it becomes possible to basically identify previous events in Sagittarius A star region by looking at various gas clouds located in the vicinity of the center. And so here, by using various X-ray observations from X-ray Polarimetry Explorer, they discovered various clouds very close to the galactic center that were glowing because of X-rays, as if something powerful illuminated them coming from the center itself. And because light travels at the light speed, 
and the distance here was approximately 205 light years away from the center, the conclusion in this case was that something must have happened 200 years ago, and that something was very powerful, involved a lot of x-rays, but most importantly, only lasted a year and a half. Specifically 1.6 years, and involved a huge amount of energy, possibly equivalent to about 1.5 lunar masses, released all as pure energy. Implying that for approximately a year and a half, the central region, or the black hole in the region, became approximately 100,000 times brighter, producing all of this energy, although most of this was in the x-rays, and not really the optical light. And the only reasonable explanation for all of this, based on all of the observations from other galaxies, is a tidal disruption event. The overall timeline, the amount of energy, and the amount of x-rays produced, match all of the previous observations. But even though astronomy was already sort of going on 200 years ago, and the scientists were already observing different stars and different phenomena, there's practically no way they would have seen this, because we didn't have any X-ray observatories, and also because the optical light here would have been really, really dim. Although the obvious question would be, did it affect planet Earth in any way? Well, even though the overall X-ray emissions increased by 100,000 times, the distance to the central black hole is still really far, almost 26,000 light years away from planet Earth. And because of this, it would be almost impossible for any of these X-rays to do anything to our planet. Which also means that the recent detections of the increase in activity should also not worry us at all, none of this will affect the planet. But this discovery is more intriguing in terms of the actual frequency of these events, and in terms of what we think happens in various galaxies. Currently, when it comes to TDEs, based on the frequency and activity, the scientists generally divide galaxies into three types. Blue, red, and green. Red galaxies are usually red because they no longer produce a lot of stars, and for this reason the scientists believe they also very likely do not produce a lot of TDEs. In contrast, blue galaxies produce a lot of stars and are usually much more active. Which of course suggests that blue galaxies should have a much higher frequencies of TDEs as well. Although somewhere in between the two, the scientists also have so-called green galaxies, which don't produce that many stars, but produce some. This is the least common type of galaxies. And what's really strange is that, to date, pretty much the majority of all of the TDEs were actually discovered in these green galaxies, not blue as predicted. In other words, for some reason, galaxies that do not produce a lot of stars, but produce some stars, kind of similar to the Milky Way galaxy, seem to have the most stars falling into central black holes, and produce the most disruption events. But the recently detected nearest TDE was from a blue galaxy that was producing a lot of stars. So there's definitely something that the scientists still don't really understand about the actual mechanism behind these events, or at least their frequency and what exactly makes them happen in some galaxies, but not in other galaxies. But in terms of these events, right here in the Milky Way, based on this recent discovery, it of course suggests that these events are unlikely to be dangerous at all, and chances are we might be able to discover even more of these events by studying other clouds in the region, and discovering other X-rays reflecting from other clouds, establishing the frequency of TDEs in the Milky Way. So definitely some really cool discoveries about these unusual events, and something to look forward to once the scientists learn even more. But we actually had some major updates about TDEs, only a few months ago, and if you'd like to learn more about this, check out the previous video in the description. Anyway, at least for now, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. We're definitely going to be coming back and talking more about TDEs in some of the future videos, mostly because this is just a really fascinating phenomenon, and something that can be used for a lot of additional studies involving black holes. For example, in some of the previous videos, we've talked about how TDEs can actually be used to create a kind of a three-dimensional scan of the entire region around the black hole. Or basically by observing how X-rays bounce around this region, and how they reflect from various parts of the black hole accretion disk, it becomes possible to map this, creating a relatively accurate image. But we'll talk more about all of this in some of the future videos, because there are definitely going to be more discoveries in the next few months. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.